I'm Emily Teacher, and today we are reading Home, Home on the Range. Many people think they know all about the cowboys of the Wild West from watching westerns. But Hollywood movies do not give a very realistic picture of the life cowboys really led. Cowboy movies are punctuated throughout by gunfire, but real cowboys were mostly mediocre shots. Cowboys seldom had reason to draw their guns. They carried them mostly for display. However, they did excel at riding and roping steers. These were the essential skills for men whose job was handling cattle. So we're talking all about the cowboys. If you've ever seen a Wild West movie, you might think of these cowboys riding on horses and shooting guns, but really cowboys didn't use their guns all that much. They were mostly mediocre shots, meaning they weren't very good at shooting things because they didn't need them. Mostly um, they were very good at riding horses, right? And roping steers or bulls, right? They were essential for these men who were handling cattle. So they were always working with cows. They needed to be strong and they needed to be able to ride their horse well. Let's read more about the cowboys. Although you would not know it from the movies, about a third of all cowboys were African-American or Latino. The f uh, in fact, the first cowboys came from Mexico. They were called vaqueros from the Spanish word vaca, which means cow. The vaqueros contributed to the English language many of the words we associate with the Wild West, including sombrero, mustang, and rodeo. So a lot of cowboys were actually African-American and Latino. The first cowboys came from Mexico and led to a lot of the words that we use now when we talk about cowboys. Following the end of the Civil War in 1865, the vaqueros number swelled with veterans who headed west to work on cattle ranches. Many were African Americans who found a greater degree of freedom in lands that were just opening up to settlement. The rodeo offered them an opportunity to prove their worth. One of the earliest performers was an African American cowboy named Nat Love. Love was born in Tennessee as an enslaved person in 1854. As a boy of 15, he worked as a trail hand out of Dodge City. There, he learned the riding and roping skills that made him a star of the rodeo. Perhaps the most famous rodeo performer was Bill Pickett, star of the Miller Brothers Wild West show. Pickett was the first African American admitted to the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. So after the Civil War, there was a lot of soldiers who needed to find work. So uh, many of these veterans who once were soldiers went west to work on cattle ranches. Um, and a lot of these would have been African-Americans because um, they had more freedom, right? There was um, in the South, there had been before the Civil War, a lot of slavery. So after this, they were looking for more freedom and where places had not been settled yet, it was a better opportunity for them to have um, have a work and a life there. So that is where many of them went. And then we hear about one of the earliest performers at the rodeo was this cowboy Nat Love, who was uh, famous at the time. And of course, one of the most famous uh, rodeo performers, uh, Bill Pickett. He was the first African American that was admitted to the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. Westerners usually show the cowboys in town having a good time, but the lives of the real cowboys were quite monotonous. They did the same things. Days were spent mostly working on the range. At that time, cowboys drove the cattle along trails that originated in Texas, where most of the cattle ranches were located. The trails ended in Kansas City, Abilene, or Dodge City. From there, the cattle were shipped east on the recently built railroads. Cowboys found casual employment as trail hands for these great cattle drives. A drive covered hundreds of miles and lasted up to three months. Cowboys were in the saddle from sunup to sundown as they herded the moving cattle. They kept a string of Mustangs, the hardy wild ponies that roamed the plains, and changed to fresh mounts several times a day. Working hard in the open air made cowboys ravenous. When the evening sun went down, they were too exhausted to do anything but eat and sleep. 
Cowboys took turns during the night to keep constant watch over the cattle. Whenever they seemed restless, the cowboys would soothe them by singing softly. Any loud noise or sudden movement could panic the herd and start a stampede. Then several thousand frantic cattle would suddenly charge off into the darkness with the hastily awakened cowboys in pursuit. So the basic things that cowboys did, right? A big thing for just employment that they needed from time to time were to be trail hands. So what this means is they would be riding up on horses all day, keeping all of the cattle, all of the cows together as they went through these trails to bring them from one place to another. They used a lot of Mustangs. They were hardy wild ponies. They were some of the strongest horses that are around. And they would change the horse that they were riding a few times a day. Um, this made the cowboys really, really ravenous. They were so hungry. They just wanted to eat food and sleep. But somebody had to stay up to keep watching the cattle, making sure that they didn't run away. When the hands were paid at the end of the trail, they headed into town to spend their money. Those were the times when brawls might erupt. It was then that a cowboy's life was most likely to resemble what we see in the movies. So while cowboys' lives were pretty same old, same old every single day, pretty monotonous, after they were paid, for doing a big trail like that, they would go into town, um, maybe to the saloon, spend some money, and that's where the fights might happen. So maybe it would look a little bit more like what you see in the Western movies at that time. Thanks for reading with me today. We do have links that are related to each of the articles. If you want the link for this story, you can find it down in the description below.